This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. What is going on Solo fam? My name is John Solo and this week on Messed Up Origins we're closing out our month of spoopy content by breaking down the folklore behind the Tooth Fairy. Now I know what you're thinking. There's nothing spoopy about the Tooth Fairy, but hear me out. Halloween was last weekend, right? That means kids all over the country have already eaten their body weight in candy. All that sugar is going to give them cavities, the cavities will make their baby teeth fall right out of their heads, and someone's going to have to come and collect them. What I'm trying to say is Halloween is the Tooth Fairy's busy season. so. I want to give her some well-deserved spotlight as a way of saying thanks for all the money. Now what do you need the teeth for? In all seriousness though, when you think about it, the Tooth Fairy trading money for teeth is a seriously weird tradition and one that I want to get to the bottom of. Before we do that though, I got to make a little announcement. After the last merch drop ended, I got a few emails from people who just missed the deadline by a day or two and were really hoping to pick something up, so I reopened the store for one more week. That means if you haven't copped your Solo Fam hoodie, t-shirt, sweater, or one of the many other incredibly comfortable options we're offering over on Bonfire, now is your last chance to get them before the the store closes indefinitely. We are going to have some brand new designs out by the end of the year with a new manufacturer, but these are in limited supply, so get them before they're gone. And now that I'm done with the shameless self promo, I say it's time we get into it. As always, make sure you curb stomp that like button, then collect the teeth for the Tooth Fairy to make a profit, subscribe to have more messed up content in your sub box every week, and most importantly, enjoy. So one of the many interesting things I learned while researching the Tooth Fairy character is that she's pretty exclusive to America. As the world has become increasingly connected in recent decades, more and more countries are adopting her, but I still want to break down the tradition behind her for those who aren't familiar with it. To put it simply, here in America, whenever a kid loses one of their baby teeth, their parents will tell them to put it under their pillow or on the nightstand for the Tooth Fairy when they sleep. Then when the kid wakes up in the morning, their tooth will be replaced with cold, hard cash. And by cold and hard, I mean coins usually. It's a pretty odd tradition, I'm not gonna lie, but it's an important part of American kids' lives. I remember back in first grade, one of the arts and crafts our whole class made was a little tooth-shaped pillow that had a pouch to put your lost teeth in. For some reason, I felt inclined to give myself three tooth pouches, you know, in case I lost three teeth in the same day but I only ever needed one. Now, when it comes to the amount of money the Tooth Fairy leaves a kid, that can range anywhere from 25 cents to about 20 bucks. At least that's the most I've seen, but if you got more, definitely let me know in a comment because I need new people to hate. If you want to get more specific though, I found a survey that Visa conducted back in 2013 asking 1,006 American parents how much they leave their kids, because I hate to break it to you, but it's not actually a fairy making the exchange and the results were pretty surprising. The survey said that on average, kids receive $2.70 a tooth, and that amount had actually decreased from $3 back in 2010. Only 3% of children were given a dollar or less, and 8% found $5 or more. $5 or more. Can you believe that? We got some wealthy ass teeny boppers walking around nowadays. Wanna know how much I got as a kid? 50 cents a pop. One time I got a dollar and I felt like a king. Little side story, I remember back in the day when I told that to the girl who lived across the street from me and she started bragging that her parents loved her more because they gave her five dollars. And that shit stung, bro. It's all good though. Her parents split up, so I won in the end. Now to the people like me who think that $5 sounds like a whole lot for a baby tooth, get a load of this. In 2017, the Medical Journal of Australia surveyed 1,274 Swedish parents about how much their kids got. Because like I said, the Tooth Fairy's gone international in recent decades. Their survey said that Swedish kids were left 7.2 Swiss francs on average, or in other words, about eight US dollars. I know, like how much do these parents parents think baby teeth are worth. Are they selling them on the black market for profit? Someone please explain this to me. Now, before you make the same mistake I did and go calling up your parents demanding the tens of dollars plus interest they owe you from robbing you toothless all those years, I gotta tell you about a survey that I ran here on the channel because I just could not believe that kids were making such fat stacks on their baby teeth while I was getting pocket change. And in my humble opinion, the results of my survey make way more sense. Out of 26,000 people, 49% received a dollar or less 15% were given more than a dollar, only 6% were given more than $5, and a whopping 30% didn't get a damn thing. Now this obviously isn't the purest survey I could have done, it doesn't take into account the time period that each participant was a child so inflation isn't adjusted for, and it also assumes everyone who voted is in a country where the tooth fairy is a thing. But even after taking those factors into consideration, this is way more in line with what I remember other kids my age getting. I do feel like we should have a moment of silence for the 30% who didn't get anything 
interesting though. Apparently the Tooth Fairy discriminates more than I thought. Now, like I said, the Tooth Fairy character is pretty exclusive to America, or at least started out that way. But we are definitely not the only people who do weird stuff with our teeth. For example, in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries, the tradition is exactly the same, only instead of a Tooth Fairy, a little rodent named Ratoncito Perez will stop by to take the tooth while the kid is sleeping. In Argentina, though, it's a bit different and kind of makes me want to puke. Instead of putting it under their pillow, kids will put the tooth in a glass of water next to their bed, and during the night, Ratoncito will take the tooth drink the water, and put some cash in its place. I've got to say, up until this point, I thought hot dog water was the grossest kind, but it just lost the throne to baby tooth water. But if that's not gnarly enough for you, check this. In Russia and Afghanistan, kids will leave their tooth in rodent holes with the hope that a rat will swap it with a tooth as strong as their own. Call me crazy, but I don't want to put a tooth that a rat's touched in my mouth. I don't care how strong it is. There's also traditions around the world that involve disposing of the tooth in other creative ways. For example, in some Middle Eastern countries, they throw the tooth directly at the sun, and in Greece and India, they toss it under the roof of their house. Another very common custom in countries all around the world and across time is burning the teeth, but the exact reason for their incineration depends on where and when it takes place. For example, in England, children used to be instructed to burn their baby teeth to save them from hardship in the afterlife. Apparently, the belief was that children who didn't would be to spend the rest of eternity trying to find them after they died, which, when you think about it, would be a horrible punishment. If that happened to me, I'd probably just end up sucker punching a few kids from the Shadow Realm and taking their teeth instead. But if you look at Europe during the medieval times, there was a belief that if a witch came into possession of your baby teeth, she would have complete power over you and you would be forced to do her bidding. So, the teeth had to be destroyed. Continuing on with that supernatural train of thought, in both Irish and British folklore, there was a belief that if an evil spirit, pixie, or fairy was coming to to kidnap you and you left one of your baby teeth out as a sacrifice, they would accept it in your place. You know what that means, right? If you didn't like your sibling, all you had to do was throw away their tooth bait to get rid of them. Ah, such simpler times. So that was a quick look at traditions and superstitions about teeth from all around the world. But let's get back to the Tooth Fairy and give the name of this video a little more legitimacy. Now the weird thing about the Tooth Fairy is that, compared to other benevolent figures in folklore like Santa Claus, not a whole lot of research has been done on her and there's really no obvious reason for it. However, we do have a few ideas about where the tradition started, and more importantly, why it started. While the Tooth Fairy is a relatively recent invention, kids being paid for their teeth is not a new concept. In addition to all those traditions I just mentioned, there's one that goes even further back to the days of Vikings. It turns out that Vikings would actually pay children for their teeth because they were said to bring good luck in battle. Then you have Tant Fee, or Tooth Fee, an old tradition in Northern Europe where a child was paid for the first tooth they lost. Now, unfortunately, there isn't any evidence that either of these customs are related to the Tooth Fairy, but there are some folklorists out there who suggest such theories. If you want an evidence-based origin, though, look no further than an issue of the Chicago Tribune that was published on September 27th, 1908. It's the earliest written record that mentions the Tooth Fairy that we've ever found, and interestingly, isn't a story, poem, or even a nursery rhyme. Instead, it's a piece of advice submitted to their household hint section by a woman named Lillian Brown. She says that many a refractory child will allow a loose tooth to be removed if he knows about the tooth fairy. If he takes his little tooth and puts it under the pillow when he goes to bed, the tooth fairy will come in the night and take it away, and in its place will leave some little gift. It is a nice plan for mothers to visit the five cent counter and lay in a supply of articles to be used on such occasions. To put it another way, if your kid has a loose tooth but is too scared to do anything about it, all you have to do is tell them the tooth fairy will reward them if they let you pull it. And that's really all there is to it. Obviously the tooth fairy had to be around before 1908 because Lillian Brown had to hear about her from somewhere, but there's a good reason to believe that she was invented for the purposes being suggested. That being said, in my opinion, the Tooth Fairy deserves a little more credit than that. In many cases, she's kids' first exposure to the idea of capitalism and what it means to have money of your own, and from there, many other conversations about fiscal responsibility can be had. No, you're of course not going to talk to your first grader about high-yield bonds and day trading, but you can talk about the basic concept of saving money to be used later or combining the loot they get from multiple teeth to buy something special. Just like how a yearly visit from Santa Claus encourages children to behave, the Tooth Fairy can encourage them to save. And given the economic crisis that's ravaged our country this year, I'd say that's a pretty good message to get in their head. But now I'm curious, what's your takeaway from all this solo fam?
fam. Do you have any thoughts on the Tooth Fairy you want to share with the class? Did you believe in her growing up or some other dental deity? Feel free to share any and all input in a comment down below. And while you're doing that, I'll tell you about this week's sponsor, Skillshare. So we talked a lot about the folklore behind the Tooth Fairy today, but what I failed to mention is how terrible she was when she first got the job. See, before that, she was just a regular fairy. So when it came to the business of collecting children's teeth, she had a lot to learn. Unfortunately for her, back in those days, there wasn't a place like Skillshare where someone like her could learn all kinds of monetizable skills that opened up brand new career paths. Lucky for us though, we live in 2020. And while that phrase has never actually been said this year, Skillshare is enough reason to believe it. They offer thousands of online classes for creative and curious people, AKA the solo fam, on topics including illustration, graphic design, photography, video, and more. Each class is made up of a combination of both video lessons and hands-on projects. And what may be the best part, most of them are less than an hour long and you can take them according to your own schedule. One class that I'm especially excited to try out is about storytelling in video and is called making the most out of stock footage. As someone who obviously tells a lot of stories through video and is always looking for pics and clips to enhance those stories, I'm curious to see what I can learn here. It really doesn't matter if you're already a master of your field or a total newbie, Skillshare has got something to offer you, but don't take my word for it. If you're one of the first 1,000 people to use my link below, you'll get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium. That means unlimited access to unlimited classes. And if you decide you like it, you could subscribe to a year long membership that'll cost you less than $10 a month. Don't get stuck collecting children's teeth every night because you didn't take the time to learn how to do anything else. Manifest your own destiny and sign up through that link to see if Skillshare is right for you. Wow. That sounds like a great service. You should consider checking it out. Before you do though, I have a few teeny tiny favors to ask. First off, make sure to curb stomp that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on to have new messed up content in your sub box on a regular basis. Also as a backup for your subscription, consider following me on social media too. I know it's not affecting everybody, but it seems like every week I see a few dozen comments from people complaining that they aren't getting notifications, my videos aren't showing up in their sub box, or they only get them in their recommendations. I I don't know, you two might be trying to suppress my content for one reason or another, but I'm not going down without a fight. And neither is my son Gunther, so go follow him on Instagram while you're at it, and like all his posts. He told me to tell you that he works very hard on those captions and would appreciate some praise. I'll be seeing you guys again next Friday with yet another episode of Messed Up Origins. Until that day comes, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first.